awesome. Cool. So, uh, again, I just want to apologize for last week. Um, we were going to go over the, uh, the secrets to LinkedIn last week. And, um, of course, five, ten minutes into it, we uh, kind of got shut down. But So what I want to do is this week we are going to um, cover what the lesson was for last week. And then we're just going to push up the lessons one week. Now, I hope everybody can can do an extra week here. I know we were supposed to be ending next Thursday, um, but due to the glitches we had last week, um, I think we're just going to push it up one week, and, and hopefully that will be good with everybody. If that is not going to be the case, go ahead and send me an email or send me a text message or something like that and just let me know. But uh, this week we're going to be talking about um, the Secrets to LinkedIn Part 1. Next week, we're going to talk about the Secrets to LinkedIn uh, Part 2. It's really kind of social media um, next week a little bit. And then the last week, uh, we're going to talk about um, mastermind groups and mentorship. So uh, we are changing the, the game plan just a little bit, but hopefully it's going to be best for everybody um, in the long run. So let's go ahead and get started tonight. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about why LinkedIn is important for you what you should include on your profile in ways that you can stand out on LinkedIn. Now, I'm going to ask, let's ask, uh, pull up my attendees here. That's Jason. How many people do you think find jobs on LinkedIn? Find jobs on LinkedIn? Yeah, percentage wise. 10, 15%. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. 10 to 15%. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's ask Tahira. How many people do you think find jobs on LinkedIn, Tahira? Uh, Percentage wise. Maybe 60%. How much? 60. 60%. Okay. Mm hmm. One more here. Let's see. Let's ask Rocio. What do you think, Rocio? How many people find jobs um, on LinkedIn? I'm going to go with like maybe 15, 20%. 15 to 20%. All right. Well, if you guys are ready for the shock, I'm going to tell you it's about 3%, 3 to 5%. Very, very low. Okay. Now, you think, wow, if there's only 3 to 5% of people getting jobs on LinkedIn, why in the world do I need to have one, right? That's, you, you think that LinkedIn is designed for you to get a job, but it's really not. You know, LinkedIn was designed to be a networking tool for you guys, and we're going to walk through that just a little bit. First, let's go ahead and cover some stats uh, about LinkedIn. One... There are over 332 million users on LinkedIn with just over half, I'm sorry, just under half being in the U.S. alone. I think the U.S. has uh, 136 million or something like that that are from the U.S. So 332 million worldwide users, about 136 million in the U.S. alone. Okay. More than 75% of recruiters constantly use LinkedIn. Uh, Matter of fact, if you have a recruiter that will contact you, the first place they will go is to your LinkedIn profile, okay? More than half of all potential employers will check LinkedIn before deciding to bring someone in for an interview. All right, so more than half of all potential employers will check LinkedIn first before deciding to bring somebody in for an interview. Now, here's an interesting stat right here. Only 14% of millennials are on LinkedIn, all right? And uh, a millennial is anyone between the ages, I think the age now is um, 16 and 32, something like that is, is uh, the millennial years, all right? So we're, we're, millennials are just to almost totally out of college right now. You guys are still considered millennials. And it really also depends on, on who you're, whose definition you're going by, but uh, roughly only 14% of millennials are on LinkedIn, okay? But so why is it important? You know, LinkedIn gives you access to professionals that you never have a chance to meet otherwise. That is the true power of LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn isn't designed necessarily for you to find a job. Matter of fact, um, it's not even designed for you to find potential hiring managers, although you can. LinkedIn is really designed for you to connect with people, okay? And these are professionals that a lot of times, if, if, you're, if you're in the groups and you're active um, and you're replying to, to posts and stuff, you know, you can actually meet professionals that you would not be able to meet otherwise because they're not in your sphere of influence. You know, it gives you a global reach. OK, now, remember, 130 some odd million Americans are on LinkedIn. You have access to a lot of professionals that really did not exist, you know, 10 years ago. OK, the second thing that LinkedIn does, and this is why recruiters and hire managers go there, is not to see anything other than, I'm sorry, it's only to um, see if your resume and your LinkedIn profile match, really. It just gives your resume a second layer of credibility. Uh, credibility. You know, you can put in um, certain things on your, your LinkedIn profile that you can't put in on your resume, um, like maybe some of your volunteer efforts or maybe some – you can't put some volunteer in your resume, but it's kind of hard to do. Uh, you can put in – you know, you have people that give you um, recommendations on LinkedIn, and that's kind of hard to put on a resume. So there is a difference in the uses of it, but the reality is – most hiring managers and recruiters only go to LinkedIn as a second layer of credibility. Your resume is still the number one layer of credibility that you have, uh, besides an interview, obviously. But before they meet you, before they bring you in, your resume is still the number one um, credibility factor that people look at. Okay? This is another one, and this is something that people really don't use, and we'll talk about this in a little bit too. LinkedIn gives you a special platform by which you can increase your influence. Okay. Now let's uh let's see here. Lee, why do you think you would need to increase your influence? Um, are you still cooking, Lee? I guess I should ask if you're cooking. Sorry. Are you are you all, all done cooking? Oh no, I'm eating dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So real, real fastly, why do you think it's important for you to, to increase your influence on on um, LinkedIn or other social media sites? Networking, it'll, it'll help you kind of network and also um, people, they'll like probably look at your LinkedIn before they like interview you. So they can kind of get a sense of how your personality is and what like your, I guess, accomplishments are. Very good. That's a great answer there, Lee. Awesome. Cool deal. Let's see if I'm going to ask uh, Brianda, what do you think? Increase your influence. I guess you get to like reach out to like a more like, like more people like because uh, of course like you don't know like the hiring manager at PetSmart or something. <laughs> like uh, I yeah. just like look up PetSmart on LinkedIn. Like I'm already following them, and it's like I get to know more like about their company and all that stuff. Yeah, awesome. Well, you both are right. So the reason that you really want to expand your influence is influence leads to credibility. Okay. So LinkedIn gives you ability. Um, you know the the. the Real key is once you get 100 plus contacts on LinkedIn, for whatever reason, people just think that, you know, that's a big deal to have 100 plus contacts. Now, you and I may argue back and forth on on if that's really true or not, but it doesn't matter because in recruiters' minds or in hiring managers' minds, 100 plus contacts is a big deal. The next step above that, obviously, is 500 contacts. If you have 500 contacts on LinkedIn, that's a huge deal. OK, so expanding your influence gives you the um, the ability to build your credibility. Now, Dominic, I was going to ask you this and I meant I didn't prep you tonight, Dominic, but I think we talked about this last week is. Uh, what? Weren't we talking about. Uh, how employers see people on LinkedIn that don't have a lot of contacts. Weren't we talking about that a little bit last week and how that affects them? No, I think what we talked about, but I'll answer that one, but what we talked a little bit about last week was kind of the extracurricular work mm, that people yeah. may do. 
Um, but, you know, it depends on your contacts, right? So some of that could be dependent on the job. As an example, if you're in sales, I'd say high marks for that, high marks for recruiters that work in HR. Um, so anything where you have to kind of reach out and market, I think, is going to say a lot. The, the thing about LinkedIn that we, you and I have talked about is you'll get a lot of endorsements and sometimes I've, I've had people endorse me on things that I don't even know how they knew about me very candidly. And so to me, the endorsements can be a double-edged sword. If it's just, you know, the one where you click on, mm -hmm. would you endorse for these skills versus a written endorsement? A written endorsement to me has a lot more credibility. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. You know, um, going to that. We're actually going to talk a little bit about that next week is the uh, endorsement side of those things. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you guys can actually remove endorsements from your profile. So we'll talk about that just a little bit next week. But anyways, that's the reason, you know, you guys really want to look at expanding your influence um, on social media and LinkedIn because it provides that extra credibility, you know, especially if, like Dominic was saying, if you're in sales or marketing or HR, you know, they want to see that you, you're a people person. And nothing tells them that you're a people person more than the number of contacts you have, okay? Now, remember, last week we talked about, or two weeks ago, when we were talking about networking, your contacts does not equal your network, all right? So don't get that confused. Your contacts does not equal your network. Your network is people you have a professional relationship with. I have well over 500 people in my contacts on LinkedIn. I guarantee you not all of them are part of my network, okay? But it does give me extra credibility. Uh, with what I do. So, you know, what what should you include on your profile? First, you know, let me ask, um, go ahead and raise your hand if you have already started a LinkedIn profile. Go ahead. And, all right. So we've got Brianda, Rocio. I know Jason does. He's probably looking to see how he raises his hand. Lee does. Okay, awesome. And I know Tahir does. So everybody does. Right, because I know Tahira has one. Awesome. So uh, let me ask. You know, let's bring up Jason again here. So Jason, when you're creating your uh, LinkedIn profile, what um, what did you think was some of the most important things for you to show the world on your profile? Um, I'm actually pulling it up right now. Uh, <laughs> Skills, I guess, skill set was uh, pretty important to me. Okay. Um, the correct title was pretty important. Like uh, what you're making sure that I had the correct listing. Um, for me, it was having it checked. Uh, current and previous, uh, making sure they're always up to date. That's always good. I don't know. Um, so did you and find like it you difficult? Said, did you find it difficult when you were setting up your profile to, you know, make things just look the right way? Um, yes and no. I've been on LinkedIn for quite a while. Um, ever since I guess I started at USA, they they said the the importance of LinkedIn over things like for them it, when I worked there, they would say they swore by it as opposed to like Facebook and other yeah. social media. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, but they, like you said, they they say it's not social media; it's networking. It's a way to get you know to get to know people and stay connected with people through, like you said, um, networking as in professional networking. So yeah. I have a premier LinkedIn. I, I'm sure that's what you have too, is a mm -hmm. premier LinkedIn account. And so yeah. I think I think it's just trying to make sure that it looks the best that it can, and and you're portraying what you wanted to. Awesome. Cool deal. I know, uh, let's see, we had, I believe, Brianda. Didn't you just create a LinkedIn profile just a couple uh, couple weeks ago, didn't you, Brianda? Or uh, that yeah, I had it for a little bit, but I wasn't really, like, active on it till like, recently, like, we had an assignment for this class where he had to, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. What do you th what do you think was some of the stuff that you struggled with setting up your profile? 
Uh, well, I don't really have like a much of like much uh, job experience like in my major because like I haven't like interned anywhere or anything. So like everything that I have on here is pretty like unrelated to like what I want to do. Okay, awesome. You know what? Um, tell you what, Dominic, if you want to put that down in your notes uh, and remind me when we get to the end, we can talk about that a little bit. We'll do that for me because I want to come back to that. Okay, Brianda, we'll do that. Okay. The so awesome. So let's go over some uh, some facts here. Now I have I just noticed that I had a uh, uh, at the at the end of this first um, part here it says you can increase your profile views over 1100 percent by using appropriate appropriate profile views. I meant picture there. I don't know why I put views again, but you can increase your profile views over 1100 percent by using an appropriate profile picture. Okay, so it's picture there, not uh, not views. But think about that, 1,100% by using an appropriate profile picture, okay? Now, a good profile picture typically is uh, from the chest up, okay? Uh, of course, you want to look the part if you are looking to, you know, get into a professional arena. It's really not good for you to be in your, your um, you know, sports clothing or your, your favorite uh, – Jersey or something like that. You want to look the part. Remember, this is for building professional relationships. Okay. So something from the chest up. You should be smiling. They should be able to clearly see your face. Okay. Um, you should have a pr fairly neutral background if all possible. So something with kind of like some uh, bland colors in the background, or you know, it doesn't. Background is important. Um, but it's not a make or break you uh, kind of deal. So if you want a good profile picture, just remember it's from your chest up, you're smiling, they can easily see your face and it's well lit, okay? And that can increase your profile views over 1,100%. Your headline, all right? This is something that, uh, that um, most people don't get right, is your headline should tell people how you are different, not just what skills you have, all right? Uh, for example, a good headline. Now, by the way, this isn't coming from me. I actually had uh, talked to a LinkedIn coach about this stuff. Okay, so this is not, you know, I'm just not pulling this stuff out of, out of the air. This is something that somebody um, that a LinkedIn coach uh, actually helped me with with my profile. But your profile shouldn't just be, you know, John Doe database manager, right? That's the title. Or your, your headline. You really want to show what makes you different if you can. Um, what the coach was telling me, and this is more for, for business, but it would work for you guys as well, is put in two quick characteristics and then a like kind of a mission statement. Okay. If you guys go to my LinkedIn profile, you'll see that where my mission statement is take control of your career. I think is what I have in my, my mission statement there at the end of my headline. All right. Now, you guys would want to say something different. You might want to say, you know, motivated, uh, creative um, and looking to make a difference, something like that. Or, you know, uh, hardworking, loyal and um, want want to be part of a team, something like that. OK, so that's how you kind of tell people that you're different. Since most people don't do that, that automatically is going to set you apart. Does that make sense? I, I'm not looking at you guys right now, but um, that's going to set you apart. If you have, you know, a couple characteristics and then kind of a call to action or not a call to action, but a, a um, uh, like a little mission statement or kind of like summarizing your goals and what you want to do for a company. Most people don't have that. You'll immediately start catching people's attention there. OK. Next, use the summary section as much as much as possible. This is another thing that most people don't do. Your summary gives you the opportunity to tell the people looking at your profile what you want them to hear. Okay? Basically, if they go through your – you don't have a summary and they go through your skills, you know, they're going through your skills, but they have to fill in a lot of the gaps usually. All right? You can take some of that away by writing down, you know, your summary in as much detail as possible. You guys can go to um, – to uh, my profile again, mine's more business related, so it's not quite the same. But you know, go check out my profile on LinkedIn, and you can kind of see how I was doing that. 
All right. Now, you guys, and this kind of goes to Brianda's comment um, about not having sufficient experience in her desired um, uh, career path. It's important for you guys to show your excitement and enthusiasm about the industry that you picked. All right. You want to show why you're excited about it. Uh, a, I didn't have this in the notes, but if you guys have a pen and paper, I want you to write this down real fast. OK. This is a real simple outline. The outline is where you were, what you saw, and what you're doing about it, okay? And this is kind of how it works. I'm just going to make something up here. Basically, in your summary, you should say, you know, hey, when I was 15 years old, I went to um, uh, my older brother's company, and, and he was working in uh, HR, and I saw how much of a difference he was making in people, uh, people's lives, and I decided that that day, that's when I wanted to do the same thing, okay? So that's kind of where I was. So what I did, you know, from that point on, I decided I was going to go to school. I went to Texas A&M, uh, got my degree, finished in the top, you know, 10% of the class, and now I am looking, so that's what you did, all right? So the first part is, I went, um, and I saw my brother, and he was helping people out. And I, I knew this is something I wanted to do. That's where you were. What you did was I decided I was going to go to school for this. I accomplished some things at school. I, I graduated top 10% of my class. And then what you're doing now is I am looking to work for a company whose desire is – whose um, you know I'm looking to work for a company where I can be a difference maker to the, to the employees there. Does that make sense? Let me ask a couple people if that makes sense. Uh, whoop. We'll go back there in a second. Let's say, um, Rocio, does that make sense to you? Uh, what was the outline again? So it's where you worked, what you saw, and what you learned about it, and what you're doing now? Is that uh, it's, it's, three, it's three parts. It's where you were, mm -hmm. what you saw, and what you're doing about it currently. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. I think that, that right. makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually, because I feel like whenever I was doing my LinkedIn, I was just kind of just throwing random facts everywhere, mm -hmm. and I was, like, a little bit lost on, like, the actual writing description about the things that I was doing or the things that I did, because, honestly, I don't have a lot of experience at all, at all. And, I mean, even HR, like, I have nothing in my resume that, correlates with it yeah so you want to you want to show how why you're excited about that right mm -hmm, excitement right. sells you know there's two things that sells experience and excitement and so you want you want to show them that you're more excited than any other graduate out there about doing hr okay and i and i uh mixed missed up messed up man i can't talk tonight i messed up that outline a little bit it's where you were what you did and where you're going Okay, so where you were, right? I went to my, you know, I was 15 year old, 15 years old, and went to, to work with my brother. That's where I was. What I'm doing, what I did is, you know, I went to AM to graduate with this with a degree. And where I'm going is I'm really looking to join a company that I can make a difference in. Does that make sense? So so basically the where you were is that that deciding moment for yes. you to do HR basically. Yeah. Or, well in my case. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of last, sense. I think. Yeah, it can be in the last couple months too. So it's not like, oh man, I was four years old. <laughs> this is what I decided. No, yeah, that makes sense. So, all right. Does anybody have a question about that? If you have a question about that, go ahead and hit the question button there. Um, let me see if I can lower everybody's hands there. Okay. If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand or hit the uh, question button. Otherwise, I'm going to keep moving on here. Okay, so uh, what to include in your profile, and this is kind of where uh, Jason was talking about here, work history. Now, your work history shouldn't just be a um, listing of skills or a listing of uh, jobs you had, right? So I was a waiter at McDonald's. <laughs> you know, we want to try as much as we can to talk about specific accomplishments not just skill sets, all right? Then again, if you don't have specific accomplishments, you're going to have to try to, to um, 
and this can be hard, but you're going to have to try to, to show how the history you did, the, the work history you had in the past, helped prepare you for what you want to do in the future. Okay? And I'm actually going to bring up Dominic on this to talk about that just a little bit. If uh... So what do, what do you think about that, Dominic? About, you know, if I don't have a lot of experience in the past to talk, try to, to um, show how the experience I do have is preparing me for the future. What do you think about that? You can, well, I think you can always reference any volunteer work you did. And here's the differentiator. It's one thing. Or it's not even volunteer work. If you're a member of a fraternity, a sorority, or any other organization on campus, okay, it's one thing when I see that someone was a participant. It's another when I can see that you led something, that you were responsible for something. It, it, it always told me that somebody took another step to do more than the basic about their involvement and whatever they were. And so when you've done that, you're going to have a history, you just have to look at it, of what you were able to do in that role or roles. Because a lot of people coming out of college may not have full-time jobs. Some people have part-time jobs. But it goes back to what you said. Just look at your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. um, Rocio and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago about hers, you know, and, and when you're involved in it, it may not seem like they're accomplishments, but trust me, they are. Yeah. They really are. I mean, to an employer, when she was telling me some of the things that she did, she was just saying things like, oh, it was just it's something she always did. She didn't see it as a leadership role, or she didn't seem to think that it was above and beyond, and it was. That's so awesome. sometimes you have to you have to just step back and take another look at it and look at what you were able to do specifically. And since we're on this topic, uh, Dominic, why don't we just jump to that third point down here and talk about volunteer work? Um, yeah. So as a hiring manager, when you see volunteer work, what what does that say to you? I, I say? like I like seeing it, and volunteer work can come in a lot of different ways, but it tells me. You know, the initial thing it tells me is people who volunteer give mm -hmm. more than they receive. And that's important because when you work, that's really what the employer is looking for. They're looking for more givers than they are takers. I'll tell you guys that right now. Because people that take generally are high maintenance. People that give are not. Yeah. And so the volunteer work is always po is always positive for me. But I go back to if you volunteer, it's one thing. If you can step it up and you've been a part of a project or a team that did something specific, that's even better. Awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff, Dominic. Appreciate it. So um, so we jumped at we jumped down to volunteer work, but volunteer work is I think it's very important to show um, especially since you don't have a lot of work history right now, anything you can do to put on volunteer work is going to help you out, okay? The next thing that's really going to help you guys out uh, because you don't have a lot of work history is going to be getting references, okay? Getting third-party credibility. Here's the deal. Even if it's not in the industry that you want to get in, now, it's better if it is. Don't get me wrong here, okay? So it's definitely better if you can get a reference from a person inside the industry that you want to get into. But references, if you can get references to talk about, you know, your work ethic, you can get references to talk about, you know, how you are different from all the other employees, how passionate you are about what you do, that's going to help you out, okay? It's, you know, again, it's not as beneficial as having it inside the industry, but it's going to be way more beneficial than not having it at all, all right? And the way that you want to collect references, here's a, here's an easy way to collect references, okay? If someone comes and tells you, hey, you did a good job on such and such, right? If you have an internship or you have um, you know, a part-time job during the summer and someone says, hey, you did a good job on such and such, that might be a person I want to come back and revisit in a few weeks and ask them to write me an endorsement or, or a reference, okay? Now, they don't have to do it on LinkedIn. They can give it to you and just get the permission to type it out on LinkedIn for yourself. So you can do that, all right? Um, so don't if they don't have a LinkedIn profile, don't like oh no I can't get the reference. You can you're just gonna have to type it in themselves and just get make sure you get their permission. But third party credibility is gonna be big for you guys, okay? 
Does anybody have any questions or comments on that? If you do, go ahead and raise your hand or um, post a question in there. Okay, awesome. Moving on. Now, ways to stand out. Okay. Now, I told you earlier about increasing your influence on social media and LinkedIn. Look at this stat. Less than 5% of professionals share on LinkedIn. The easiest way to stand out is to share content using Pulse. Pulse is like the LinkedIn blog. I want you guys to think of LinkedIn like your personal website. Okay? If you guys had a personal website, remember, we're talking about you treating your job like a business. So right now you guys are looking for work. You are a business that's looking for new clients. Okay? To do that, you need to be active. Less than 5% of professionals are sharing on LinkedIn. This is an easy way for you guys to, to stand out, okay? Share on LinkedIn. Now, content should be personal, but it doesn't have to be originally inspired. So it should be personal, but not originally inspired. What does that mean? That means that you, you can just, you know, if you find a link or you find an article that you liked, just share it. It doesn't have to be originally inspired, but it has to be personal to you. So if it's not personal to you, now, if you're just sharing stuff that you have real no interest in, you know, people are going to catch on after a while, and it's just going to be kind of work wasting time, okay? But if it's information that's beneficial to you and you think that other people would benefit from it, just share it. Like it, comment, and share, okay? That's a great way to start sharing content. What I was doing when I first started um, 150 Connect is I would find articles that I really liked. And I would create a blog out of it, but what I would do is I would only blog, you know, maybe one paragraph defining the article, just something that I really liked about the article, and then I shared the article afterwards, right? So you read my portion, only took you, you know, maybe 30 seconds to read, and then I shared the link, and you can go and read the article for yourself. Now, you might have just been satisfied with um, my analysis of, of what I got out of it, but you also want to might want to go in and get more information. So... That's also how I did it. That might be something you can do too. You know, you find an article that you took something really interesting out of it. Just write a couple of sentences on, you know, what you got out of that article and then share the article. That's how you can be um, out there sharing content, all right? And posting content is a great way to increase your profile views. When I first started doing this a couple months ago, um, I think I had just – over 300 contacts on LinkedIn, okay? I've been very diligent about posting. I have well over 500 contacts now on LinkedIn. This is all from sharing content, okay? I've started authoring my own content. I've shared other people's content. By the way, when I share content, I make sure I share content from people who have a lot of followers because they're going to get the, – their followers are going to find that content, and now they're going to see my name on it too, okay? So I'm able to piggyback off of other people, okay? Some other ways to stand out. This is, a, this is one that I know you guys were talking about a few weeks ago in your class. Less than 20% of all job seekers are using video resumes, okay? Does anybody um, – do a show of hands – if, if you are contemplating doing a video resume, go ahead and raise your hand. All right, we got Brianda. Anybody else? Contemplating. I'm not saying you're going to do that. Just contemplating it. All right, one. All right. So I'm going to say that you guys – whoops. Let's go back here. You guys should really consider this. All right, and let me let me tell you why. One, only 20% of job seekers are doing it, but over 90% of hiring managers would be interested in seeing one. Look at the discrepancy there. Okay, remember this is all about getting you to stand out. If you're if you're in business for yourself, and you are, and you're going into a noisy job market, you have to find a way to stand out. I want you to think of it like you're you're in India in a market square. Right, there is a lot of noise going on in that market square. You got mark, uh, you have um, vendors who are who are using bright colors. You have vendors who are shouting out. Why? Because they're competing in a noisy environment. You guys are competing in a noisy environment, not in the same way that they are, but there are 
hundreds of people looking for the same jobs that you are. You have to find a way to stand out. Most people, as you see by that stat, only 20%. So that means 80% of job seekers are not doing video resumes. That is a way for you to stand out, is doing a video resume, okay? Because over 90% of hiring managers would be interested in seeing one. 90% of hiring man managers would be interested in seeing one, okay? Matter of fact, using a video resume on LinkedIn is so new that there are currently no stats on its use. This is truly a ground-level job seeker strategy. You guys have the opportunity to really stand out in the marketplace using a video resume. Now, I have just written a booklet that I'll take you to after, um, after this uh, webinar here. I'll show you on the, the computer screen here. But I've just written a small little work guide that will help you guys um, put together a video resume. It pretty much covers your three biggest questions. How long should it be? What should I say? And where should I use it? Okay. How long should it be? What should I say? And where do I use it? I answered those three questions in that booklet, and I'll take you to that, to that a little bit later. But you guys really need to think about um, doing a video resume. Okay. So quick review, more than 75% of recruiters constantly use LinkedIn. Oh, you know what? I must have skipped that uh, slide there. Or did I delete it out? Let's see. Oh, I did. I skipped that. Never close out your job day. Let's go. Whoop. Too fast there. Sorry. I skipped that little, uh, that one at the bottom there is never close out your job date right after uh, the summary. The reason being that you never want to close out your last job date is that there are search tools that recruiters use when they're looking for job applicants. And a lot of times they won't search for people who have closed out a last job date or a job date that's been closed for more than X many days. Okay. So what you want to do is you don't want to lie, so you want to close out your last job, but then you want to immediately open up another one that says, you know, uh, HR manager in transition from this date till, and it's not closed. Does that make sense? So, you know, whatever it is, IT professional in transition, that's your new job, in transition, started on this date, currently employed there. The reason being is that recruiters typically look, um, when they set their filters, they're looking for either those who are currently employed or those who have been um, out of work no more than 30 days. All right, so I want you guys to remember that. Uh, and sorry, I skipped over that. So going back to the, uh, going back to the review here, okay? So never close out your last job date. All right. Less than 5% of professionals share on LinkedIn. The easiest way to stand out is to share content on Pulse. I want you guys to start doing that. All right. I'm connected to most of you on LinkedIn, if not all of you. I want to see you guys start sharing some content this week. OK. Using video resumes on LinkedIn is so new. There's currently no stats on its use. This is truly the ground floor for job seekers. All right. This is a great way for you guys to stand out because most people aren't doing it. That means you're going to immediately stand out when uh, when you start to do it. All right, let's open up the uh, let's open up the uh, mics here a little bit. So you guys are all unmuted. So what do you what did you guys take from this so far? What's what's the biggest thing that stood out to you guys? Somebody jump in there. What do you think? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Lee. Oh, that LinkedIn can be a really powerful tool if you know how to use it carefully or correctly. <laughs> um, because before this, I thought that LinkedIn could have just, you know, basically kind of like what I've done instead of like being proactive. More personal. Yeah. Awesome, Lee. Mm-hmm. What about you, Rocio? What did you take out of the lesson? I mean, I agree. As long as you know how to use it, because I, I, 
I feel like I I know nothing about it, but I have more of an idea now on like what it should kind of look like. So basically, making it simpler for the potential employer to go and like review you of sorts, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. And next week we'll talk about how to be a little bit more proactive in that too. So you're not feeling like you're just, you know, waiting for somebody to discover you. You can actually be a little bit more proactive, but that's awesome. Uh, what about you, Jason? What did you, what did you take out? Well, I've already changed my profile picture. Good from, man. I put that on there just from, from the, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I already changed that since I had, since I had my ring day picture up. I got to change that one. Uh, and I changed the headline. So I'll let you read that. I changed the headline on that. Awesome. I'll go. And, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. And, right uh, tonight. and other than that, uh, most of the stuff I already had, but it, it let me make some changes. So it's always good to learn something. Awesome. Cool deal. What about you, Tahira? Uh, I just. One thing I is very confusing for me. How can you make your mission statement? Um, yeah. Should it be like reflecting your summary or so how it should be? If you go to my profile to hear it and you look at my headline, um, I can't remember exactly what I have on there, but I think I have uh, millennial career coaching. Yes. Resume, resume and take take control of your career, right? So I, I listed two. It might be three actually that I listed. I, I remember I have two or three, but it's either two or three um, things that I do, and then my mission statement is take control of your career, right? My mission is yeah. help you guys take control of your career. So oh, for you, it's going to be a little bit different. In as um, you know, you might want to say something like um, making a difference through reservoir engineering or something like that, right? So you just got to customize it to you where, you you know, what do you really want to do? You know, um, using my skills to be creative in the workplace. So, no, I, I, think, I think that the question I was asking, you answered it in your statement because you stated three of your skills. And then actually career coaching videos in his boot camps are like the thing you are interested in and you are expert in, in advising other people. Correct. And then, yeah, and then you are taking control of your career. It is your mission statement. This is like that. Yep, that's how it works. Okay? Yeah, it's, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand that. So, and one more thing, like if my, okay, yeah, go ahead, please. No, I was going to say, um, you know, go ahead and, and if you're going to change yours up, just just send me a text message or a LinkedIn message, and I'll take a look at it. And uh, Okay, okay. okay. Right? So, you know, don't think this is the only time you can talk to me about it. Go ahead and send it. That's, that goes for everybody. If you guys want to go ahead and change change your um, your headlines up and want me to take a look at it or any of your profile pictures or, or LinkedIn page, you know, just let me know. All right, and I'll go over there and, and uh, help you guys out, okay? Uh, who haven't I talked to? Brianda, did I talk to you yet? About uh, no. what you this lesson? <clears throat> no, I just really got out that I really need to change a lot of stuff about my LinkedIn profile, like my summary, need to get like a little more details in that. Yeah, make sure you're, you're really, um, you know, I really like that that outline of, you know, where I was, what I did, and where I'm going mm -hmm. for your outline. I think if you guys can put that together, I think that's going to really make you guys uh, stand out there. So, uh, Dominic, did you have any questions for anybody? Uh, on here? I have a couple of statements, actually. Yeah. One of the things, you know, in thinking about mission, don't be afraid to say that you focus on getting things, you get things done by focusing on influence and execution. Because those are two things that will pique an employer's interest. Mm -hmm. Because you folks have, may have heard me say this before. Most companies don't miss it on strategy. They miss it on execution. And having someone who can influence people to get things done 
is a lot better than having to strong arm them or use a power play. And the other thing I would tell all of you tonight, um, y'all did a really good job when Jason called on you about being pretty articulate and open and stating what you learned and things that you need to change. That's an important thing to be able to do. And I will tell you, when I sit and listen to these, I look at things a lot of the time. The dynamic that I look for in these meetings is they're like a staff meeting. And I will tell you, and I told Jason this earlier, there will be a point in your career in three to five years you will hate going to meetings because it will <laughs> seem like that's all you do. But I will tell you, even in your staff meetings with your managers, they are looking for people who participate. And the people who participate and give feedback before they're called on, it's even better. But when you're called on and you're as articulate as you folks have been tonight, and actually you are in, in all of these, which has kind of impressed me very candidly, but when you take the lead in it, it's another thing that sets you aside and sets you, it shows that you're different from everybody else in the group. Because most people will wait to be called on, and those that volunteer information and raise their hand, I'm telling you, it's little things like that that will propel you. It's rarely any big step that makes people shine at work. It's a lot of little things. thousand little steps, yeah. That's good stuff, Dominic. I appreciate that. Does anybody have uh, any questions about this uh, lesson? or anything they need extra clarification on? Nope. So just to, um, one, I don't know if you guys have been calling Dominic. I know a couple of you guys have. I just want to say something real fast about that. You know, if Dominic was charging you guys for the time that you use, it would cost on average anywhere from 200 to $250 an hour. All right, so I want you to think about that. 200 to $250 an hour, and he's doing it for free for you guys, all right? I don't want you guys to be afraid to call Dominic during the week. I really can't stress that enough. He is offering um, his time to help you guys out. He's been doing this kind of stuff for over 30 years. If he was getting paid to do this kind of stuff, it would cost you $200 an hour. Something tells me that you would probably want to take a free uh, opportunity to talk to Dominic, then wait six months and have to pay that kind of kind of money. Okay, so if you have questions during the week, or as you're looking for jobs, or if you have you know you hear something in your class about a resume that just doesn't make any sense to you, please call Dominic up. All right, he is there to to help you guys out. All right, and Dominic, would you like to say anything to that? Now, as far as I'm concerned, it, anything that comes up that you feel like is work related and you have questions about. Feel free. I mean, there's a few of you that I've talked to, and I enjoyed the conversations. I hope that you folks did. But I just try to take a very practical approach in, in telling you how to navigate through the workforce because that's what it's about. And it really is about a lot of little things. And I guess I do feel like that I've seen where people fail, and there are common themes when they fail. And so what I just want you guys to be able to benefit through that. I was real fortunate in that I had good mentors mm -hmm. when I started working, and I always appreciated that. And it was always very helpful for me. And I will tell you, you will run into something at some point. And my hunch is you've run into it even in the past. And even if you think of things that you ran into in the past and thought, how should I have dealt with that other than avoidance? Because avoidance typically, it'll work. I'm not going to tell you it doesn't work. People do it all the time. But it's not the most effective way to handle situations. Yeah. And I would just encourage you to do it. Awesome. So uh, real quick, let's go over our action steps. And then I want to get just a little bit more feedback before we uh, get going about the course so far. Uh, so your action steps for this week is – um, using the tips that we shared in this lesson, go ahead and create or update your LinkedIn page. I know a bunch of you guys probably already made notes for that. Second one, uh, remember we said that the first mark you need to try to get to is 100 contacts. The best way to do that is connect with everybody in this group. 
If you don't have their contact information, send me an email or a text message, and I will forward that on to you guys, okay? Connect with everybody in the group. The other thing you need to do is connect with everybody in your classes. If they have a LinkedIn profile, go connect with them. You want to hit that 100 mark as soon as possible, okay? Um, if you need help putting your summary together, you know, if you if you want help kind of talking about how you should bring it about, go ahead and schedule a time with Dominic to go over what you should and should not include into that uh, summary, okay? So if you have any questions about that, go ahead and call Dominic this week. Also, I was very surprised that most of you aren't interested in creating a video resume, um, but I think I think it's a very, very, very important tool of the future. I think this is where everything's going. Video, um, I don't have a lot of time to talk about, it, but if you look at trends, video is the wave of the future, and I think you guys need to look at um, look at doing that. Go ahead and you know, just for kicks and giggles, why don't you guys go ahead and start writing a video resume script? You can call Dominic to review. Also, if you need uh, if you need some more guidance on that, let me just show you guys real fast. Let me exit my big screen here. There we go. All right. I just wrote this little booklet here. The easy guide for creating video resumes. All right. Really, really affordable for you guys. It's less than a cup of coffee. Go ahead and get the book. It will teach you what you need to say, how you need to say it, how long it needs to be, all the stuff that you're you're curious about. It's in the book. All right. So um, I will send you guys the link later on tonight. But get that book if this is something you're really interested in. All right. And it'll take a lot of the questions out. Three dollars and forty-seven cents. I mean, most of you guys will spend that on a cup of coffee tomorrow or or eating out this week. It's a low-risk deal. If you're just even curious about doing it, go ahead and get the book, okay? Now, to uh, close up tonight, I know we're, we're right at 930, real fast. I want to get some real fast feedback on how you guys um, have thought about the course so far. We've done three lessons now. Curious to see. Uh, have you guys been getting a lot of benefit out of this? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> what? What's giving you guys the most benefit from the course? Is it the interaction at the end? Is it the lesson plan? Is it talking to Dominic? What's giving you guys the most benefit? Lesson plan. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I really like the lesson plan too. Like it motivates me to like go out and like do stuff rather than just like not like talk to people and stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, like. Networking, like now I feel like I can like network better. <laughs> awesome, good for you. I'm glad to hear that, Lee. Cause I remember when we first talked, that was your biggest thing. Oh, well, that was Brianda. Yeah. Oh, hi, Brianda. Yeah. For me, I think it's been talking to like I'm very personal, so mm -hmm. I have to have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody. So talking with Dominic has was really really helpful for me. He made me realize a lot of things that I didn't know. So, yeah. Awesome. What about you, Jason? What's What's been one of the biggest things that uh, has been most beneficial for you? Um, for me, it's been a lot of the small tips, like uh, about the interviewing process, about the like the LinkedIn tips today. A lot of the smaller tips that I, I take away. I, I'm a big. I think. I've I've been exposed a lot to the workplace already, and a lot of the bigger tips that you give that I think yeah. help a lot of the class out a lot. But I pay attention to a lot of the smaller details that you say, because I think the bigger picture, like I said, it helps a lot of the the class. But I I try to I try to find the hidden details in what you say or the smaller details because I think that helps me more. Awesome. So like when you're talking, like I said, when you're talking about like the process of being engaged, things like that, that's what I take away from it. The LinkedIn stuff on how to refine that because I've already have it and I've been working on that for years. So how to refine it, things like that. Awesome. Cool deal, man. Did anybody not share yet? Yes, me. Go ahead. Yes, I think the biggest fear I had but I am following up after the interview. I always thought that I'm going to make the employee annoyed 
and she's a I mean, I think I was very pushy and stuff, but I think Dominic guided me a little bit. How should I approach the the empire after the interview? The following up process. Awesome. I think I was thinking that I forced them too much, but I think the fear I had, the, but because of the Dominic advice, I think that has gone. Awesome, cool. Dude. And yeah, and the thing that you forced me that I how I should approach people constantly, how should to how to engage them with my communication. I think these two things were the most beneficial for me. I think I didn't do that thing as um, effectively before. Awesome. That is great to hear. That is awesome, guys. I really appreciate you guys' feedback. Dominic, do you have anything to say about that or any other questions you want to get off with? No. I, you know what I'm happy about? There's something for everybody. Yeah. Because everybody learns differently and in different ways. And, folks, I'm just glad we're able to hit – on some things that are helpful, which is when Jason and I started this, it's what we wanted to do. Yep. So I feel good about it. I do too. That's awesome. Cool deal, guys. Well, uh, I hope – does anybody have any questions, anything else before we go here? Everybody, uh, anybody need any clarification on anything? Cool deal. Well, no, just I want that then I'm done with – Go ahead. I just want that if I – and then I'm done writing the summary. Oh, you're you're uh, breaking up just a little bit there. I know you're talking about yourself. You're you're breaking up there a little bit, Tahira. Um, tell you what, why don't you uh, why don't you call me afterwards and uh, I can answer whatever question you had a little bit. All right. So. With that, guys, we'll go ahead and close up for the night. Um, again, if you need to talk to me at all this week or or Dominic. You know, feel free to, to call us or text us, guys. We're here for you guys and, and really want to add some extra value for you. So with that, we will uh, close out. I hope you have, guys have a great evening, and we will see you all next week. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night.